Well, let's get into one of the major arguments that I know you address these arguments in your excellent book, but uh, uh, one of the major arguments that's offered, and I run into it all the time, is uh, the pre-trib rapture couldn't be true because it was all conjured up in the early 1800s by an oh. Englishman named John Darby who got it from uh, a charismatic 16-year-old uh, girl who was probably demon-possessed and she had all these visions and, and, and that's where it all came from. Yeah, boy, we couldn't wait to get to that part. Uh, not me, really, because it's like once we, you can say, okay, let's deal with the facts. That's a serious accusation. Let's yeah. deal with it. And you're going, you've got to be kidding me. It rem reminds me of the axiom. You repeat a lie loud enough, long enough, and often enough, people will believe it. And certainly it's that whole John Darby connection. Uh, first of all, I don't believe in the rapture because of John Darby, uh, <laughs> period. I believe because that's what the Bible teaches. Uh, but when we began to investigate that, there is so much evidence. We have eight pages of historical evidence of people prior to John Darby, and we're talking the first generation after John wrote Revelation 95, 96 AD, who clearly, you know, uh, uh, Clement, uh, Barnabas, uh, Tertullian, Irenaeus, all these different guys. They who, taught imminency. Yeah, they taught mm -hmm. imminency, and it's like, and this is the next generation after the writing of the book. So, and then all the way forward, we have eight pages in the book. Uh, showing that, are you serious? What history are you reading? Because it's not the real one. There is so much documented evidence of people prior to 1830 promoting uh, certainly imminency and, and pre mill oh, and yeah. things of that nature. Since the pilgrims, even, they were at a huge revival into the imminency of Jesus Christ and the rapture of the church. Yeah, and again, it's like, hey, I, I, we're, we don't have like secret connection with the CIA, and we're the only <laughs> ones who can come across this information. It's like, it's no, there for no, it's there. people say, it. but again, people, they repeat a lie loud enough, long enough, yeah. often enough, they repeat it. Then, because we have the companion book, but we also have the uh, DVD documentary set and Bible study curriculum, the whole package mm -hmm. to get people equipped. Well, we went over to Scotland. In the documentary, and we filmed on location where Margaret McDonald, Port Glasgow. We went and shot at the huh. film at the grave site there with uh, uh, John Darby and wow. uh, and stuff of that nature. So we did our homework too, and that is one of the biggest. And I'm, I don't know how to say it. It's a lie. It's just a flat out lie. And I tell people like, listen, uh, maybe you've been watching too many CSI episodes and you think you're a good detective, but I'm sorry if you keep propagating this. You're either, with all due respect, the worst investigator on the planet. Or you're lying because yeah. th th this whole connection with John Darby is crazy. It's a shutdown uh, statement when you say like when some people say, "Well, you're a homophobe." Well, then you can't. You're scared to say anything. Yeah. They'll say, "Well, it's too new to be true," and then it shuts down most Christians from exploring the rapture. Yeah. Well, and again, well, John Darby. They say it started with her, her demonic thing, uh, 1830. Well, first of all, it's on historical record. He began to develop his ideas three years prior, 1827. Right. Oh, uh, he had an accident, and he began to see. He had lots of time to study, and so he began to see a distinction between Israel and the church. And then he began to develop his views three years prior to the 1830 date. Number two, he was aware uh, in our investigation of Margaret McDonald, but he clearly called her out for what it was. It's demonic, and he wanted to have nothing to do with that. Even Wikipedia gets that one right. And even what she said wasn't didn't point to a pre-trib rapture, right? That one. That's why I said we couldn't wait to get to this because that's the nail okay. in the coffin to me. It's like, come on. All right, the Bible teaches pre-trib. There's plenty of historical evidence prior to 1830 that a lot of Christians uh, did this. It's nothing new, right? And he developed it on his own prior. But listen, when you take a look, and anybody can get a copy, you can take a look at her utterance. It's not even pre-trib. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's the thing about it. Uh, there's a fellow named Dave McPherson who has made a cottage uh, uh, yeah. industry out of writing uh, books about this. And, and he puts out the same book over and over with different titles. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading that and read 200 pages about how all this came from Margaret MacDonald. And then I go to the back to the appendix, and yeah. there's her vision. And I read it like 25 times and could never find a pre-trib rapture in it. It's not even there. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what blows me away. And I'm going like, okay, I'm trying to be kind. Uh, either stop watching those CSI shows, getting you inspired to think you're a detective because your work's pretty shoddy, or frankly, you're lying. Well, I think you touched the bottom line. Satan doesn't want anybody to be uh, interested in a pre-trib rapture. Yeah. Uh, he, he, that's the last thing he wants anybody to hear anything about. Yeah. So.